I have a problem. <laughs> it's a debilitating disorder that affects a fraction of humans and almost all other mammals. This condition has plagued me almost all my life, but I won't let it dictate me. It's time it was out in the open. I, I, I can't handle spicy food. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm a curry coward, a pepper pessimist, a Scoville scaredy cat. Will all you norms out there brashly order your chef's special vindaloo? I'm the guy shamelessly ordering the korma. <laughs> but you don't understand. No one understands. Until now. This is capsicum annuum, also known as the bird's eye chili. And tonight, in the name of science, I'm going to sink my teeth into this thing and explain to you all what it does to me. Oh, jeez, am I doing this? Oh, the first thing that hits me is excruciating pain. That is all down to the active ingredient of the chili, capsaicin. As soon as it hits my mouth, capsaicin opens tiny gates called ion channels located in my nerve cells. Positively charged sodium ions flood through these gates, sending an electrical impulse shooting to the pain centers of my brain and signaling a red alert. But this isn't just any kind of pain. My mouth is on fire. You see, the ion channel opened by capsaicin, called TRIP-V1, is what we call a noxious heat receptor. Its job is to detect painful levels of heat, anything over around 45 degrees. Capsaicin can activate TRIP-V1 and open the tiny gates of pain no matter what the real temperature inside my mouth. This chili is literally tricking my mouth into thinking it's on fire. By now, I've got a fairly impressive shade of red and I'm starting to sweat like Donald Trump in a CIA meeting. These two effects are both a result of that fake heat. My body is desperately trying to cool itself down by sending blood to my extremities and by opening sweat glands to lose heat through evaporation. But these two effects are all in vain. I'm trying to lose heat when I'm not even hot. I need to do something to stop the capsaicin in its tracks. Right now in the curry house, you may reach for that ice-cold, refreshing glass of water. But that would be a serious mistake. You see? Just like the oil that floats on top of your curry, capsaicin does not dissolve in water, and drinking it will only make matters worse. Food or drink high in fat, however, such as milk, yogurt, or lassi, should help dissolve the capsaicin and neutralize its effects. But there is one more way to put out the fire. High-proof alcohols are also very effective at dissolving capsaicin. And so, to my fellow sufferers, next time you're in the curry house and that exotic dish turns out to be a little bit more fiery than expected, Step away from the water and have a shot of vodka instead. Thank you.